We will continue chapter 10 with lecture number 4, and in this lecture we're going to derive the LM curve. So remember, this is the big picture. Where have we gone? We've gone through liquidity premium theory, and now we're ready to derive the LM curve. So that's this is what we've done so far. So the next piece. So we want to derive the LM curve. So now what we want to do is we want to take a step back to this demand for real balances, or you could think about it as this demand for liquidity. Okay, and remember we defined it before as the demand for real balances was this function of interest rates. Well, that's demand as a function of the price of the good. So now what we want to do is we're going to add in there demand as a function of the price of the good and your income. And basically we're going to say that there is a negative relationship between interest rates and liquidity demand or money demand and a positive relationship between your income and money demand. And that makes a fair amount of sense. If you have more income, you want to spend more money, you have more transactions, you'll demand more liquidity. If the interest rate goes up, well then the cost of holding liquidity goes up and so you'll want less so you'll want to hold less liquidity. All right, that's just all pretty common sense. So let's keep going forward. Now, the LM curve is the graph of all combinations of interest and income that result in this money market, or this market for real balances, market for liquidity, or the liquidity market, clearing. In other words, the supply and demand for real balances are equal. The quantity supplied of real balances and quantity demanded of real balances are equal. So all those combinations that result in the money market clearing are what make up the LM curve. Now it's really important to remember that definition. It's just like the IS curve. It's kind of basically, if you don't know what you're talking about, you're kind of sunk to begin with, and the definition's what we're talking about. So make sure you memorize that. So the equation for the LM curve is very simple. It is money supply equals, and remember this is the money supply. Note that in our model, money supply or the supply of real balances is exogenously determined. Prices are sticky and therefore they are stuck at wherever they are. And the Federal Reserve or whatever the central bank is in the um, nationality or place where you're at is sets the money stock at whatever it wants to. All right, and that equals money demand. Easy peasy. So let's derive this mathematically. So notice, before I get started, what I've done is I've lined up my axes. I line them up just like I lined it up when I did um, the um, IS curve. So in slot A here over on the left, I've got the market for real balances. Slot B, I'm going to do the market for or the, the LM curve. And notice that the horizontal or the vertical axes are both real interest rates. And that's why we line them up like this. Okay, the, the IS curve you stacked because it was the horizontal axis that was the same. These you set side by side because it's the vertical axis that's the same. All right, so let's keep going. And well, we've got our first money supply function. And that's at an income level of Y1. And at an income level of Y1, we have our money demand function. And that gives us an interest rate. So we know that we're in equilibrium at the combination of real interest rate R1 and um, the output level of Y1. So what do we do next? Let's increase income and see what happens. Well, if I increase income, and, well, real balances we're assuming are a normal good, what's going to happen? Demand for that normal good is going to, that's right, it's going to increase. So it's going to shift to the right. And what will we have? We'll end up with a higher interest rate. So the combination of interest and income that yields equilibrium in the money market is real interest rate 2 and income 2. We connect the dots, and we have the LM curve. So, why does the LM curve slope up? An increase in income raises money demand. It's just that simple. Money is essentially, we, we want to think about this as, it is something of a normal good. Uh, it's a weird normal good, I'll grant you, but it's a normal good. If we have more income, we want more transactions. If we want more transactions, we're going to demand more liquidity. 
Um, and since our supply of real balances is fixed, well, that means the only way we deal with excess demand for liquidity is by increasing the interest rate. We don't actually increase the quantity of liquidity and distribution, just it just drives the price of that liquidity up. So it just drives the price of money up or the real interest rate up. Okay, so interest rate has to rise, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now, what happens if, say, we do monetary policy? Now remember, with the LM curve, what's going to affect that? Monetary policy is going to affect that. Is fiscal policy going to affect the LM curve? Not directly. So fiscal policy changes are generally modeled through the IS curve, and monetary policy changes will get modeled through the LM curve. Okay, which makes sense because the LM is dealing with liquidity markets and the IS curve is dealing with goods markets. Okay, I think IS actually stands for investment and savings, I think, but, you know, I still don't claim to actually know what IS and LM stand for. So, we have a change in M, so let's say we have an increase in the money stock. All right, so delta M, oh no, I'm sorry, decrease in the money stock. It says delta M is less than zero, so we're going to reduce the amount of money in circulation, which is a contractionary monetary policy. What happens? Well, prices are sticky, so price doesn't change, and therefore, what do we have? The supply of real balances simply decreases. Now, because the supply of real balances have decreased, well, we're going to end up with a higher equilibrium interest rate, but did income change? It sure didn't, so what happens? We've had an upward shift in the LM curve. And usually I like to think of the LM curve shifting up and down because you were talking about interest rates moving up or down. You can think of it left and right, doesn't really matter. I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to say the LM curve increased or decreased. I don't really have a good adjust economic interpretation of the LM curve increasing. So I usually just think of it shifting up or down. Okay, so where are we at with our big picture? We've created, we've derived the IS curve, we've derived the LM curve. So let's put the two of them together and we're going to create the ISLM model. So here's our IS curve. There's our LM curve. Notice they're graphed on the, same a on the same set of axes, so we can easily cross them. And short run equilibrium happens to be the point where the goods market clears and the money market clears. So really what we've done with the IS curve is reduce a system of two equations down to one. And what we've done with the LM curve is reduce a system of two equations down to one. And now what we've done is we've created with the ISLM model, from these four equations that we had to start with, we've created a system of two equations. And short-run equilibrium is the intersection of the IS and the LM curves. So that becomes our short-run equilibrium interest rate, and that's our short-run equilibrium level of outcome, of, of output. All right, we will continue with the next lecture um, in just... All right, that completes this lecture. We will keep pushing on in the next one.